Okay, I'm here with Mr. Wild. If you're brand new here, Mr. Wild is uh, a BC Wildie. He's an absolute barrel of monkeys, such a real sweet horse. And um, he's interested in me right now. And there's a reason for that, is because I have something in my pocket that I know he likes. Now, this problem I have right here is what I consider uh, sort of the, the missing piece of horse training with treats, which is just peace, peace and quiet. A horse that isn't going to try to mug you or constantly have their body on you. Now, some people like this. Some people enjoy this activity where their horse is constantly trying to nibble on them and they've got to put their hands up and ward them off and stuff. But I don't find this peaceful. And I don't know if the horse finds it peaceful. Now, I'm not like we're at war, we're not having a fight, but I will constantly have to sort of ward him off to get him to sort of leave me alone. And I did a video a while back about going into a large area with a bunch of horses uh, with treats in my pockets, which at the time was apples. And none of it was peaceful. It was actually a very stressful situation because I'm constantly telling my horse to leave me alone or all of the horses to leave me alone. And if we see kind of the expression on his face, how he's looking around an awful lot, he's checking to see if there's other horses that are gonna come in and, and take his food that's on my body. And the amount that I'm moving around to sort of keep my eye on him as he keeps kind of poking me with his nose. And, and while it's not necessarily bad, don't see his ears go back. He doesn't want to be told no. And it's not like he's a poor behaving horse. <laughs> he's not the type of horse that you kind of, you know, you think, oh, he's, he's, he's a lot of trouble. He's going to, you know, be whatever. He's not, look at there, he's yelling at Annie. He's going to yell over at Lena, who's just right there. Um, and I think that when it comes to, if I were to do this a lot with him, so let's say, for example, I do give him a carrot. So here you go, here's your carrot. Now he knows the carrots are on me and he knows I will give him one for whatever reason. It doesn't really matter. I'm, I'm definitely not sold on the idea that uh, horses know why they're getting a treat all the time, I think to them. And uh, there's a few other uh, trainers out there that we just believe that horses see food as food. And if my theory is correct, he should start mugging me more kind of thing. This lack of peace, this last, lack of sort of quietness uh, where he'll just hang out with me and I won't have to ward him off or ask him to stop or something like that. Because this is something that he would do to a horse that was above him. And I just think that in many, many cases, if a horse is treat trained, their, their, their behaviors are modified uh, by applying treats. So they do some kind of trick, they do some kind of activity, they do some thing. They're always sort of searching for that thing, especially if they can smell the food that's on you. And, or they will constantly be trying to uh, take it from you. And as such, we have to, if, if we are doing that, then we're constantly teaching them, hey, back off. But then it's hard to teach the idea that, you know, we want them to go but not leave because they're so busy reaching towards us. And the last thing is, is that it appears as if I have an awful lot of draw with my horse, like my horse wants to be here. You can see how often he's going to yell at the other horse who's not even looking. She's over eating her own food right now. And how much he feels like he needs to, look at that, I can't even push him. There we go, okay, let's stay. It's a lot of effort. And in my mind, like I feel like I can't just stand here and cross my arms and just be peaceful and talk because I'm gonna have this mugger come along and give me a hard time and try to get some food. So I gotta keep my eye out. He's going behind me now. Look at him. He knows where it is. So I think that 
uh, many instances that I've seen and experienced uh, and, and directly experienced when I do these kind of demonstrations is that the, the piece of the puzzle, and I know it's a bit of a catchphrase right now, but I really feel like the piece of the puzzle that's missing in talking about tree training is just peace and quiet where a horse can just stand around and be without thinking about whether or not they can do a trick to get something, do a thing to get something, or just get something. Um, and just be. Although you seem to be catching on a little bit, hey? He's like, stop petting me. Right? Always asking. That's another thing, always asking. Ask, 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 nibble, nibble. Not that he doesn't kind of do this by nature, but anyhow, something to ponder. I think that, um, you know, there, there's, there's some value obviously to what treat training represents, where it's a positive reinforcement sort of concept. Uh, but plenty of times I do think it's a little bit misused or misinterpreted in a way that sort of lacks that quietness that should come from just being around each other. They're not constantly demanding or, or asking or, again, doing some kind of thing because they think they're going to get something. Right? You're being good now though, aren't you? Good boy. Anyhow, that's it for this one. It's a short one. Uh, just thoughts that I just kind of want to get out. Hopefully that's kind of interesting. Any questions or thoughts, let me know anytime and I'll see you guys in the next one.